something I really wanted people to grasp from our experience as first timers doing this is a lot of people don't know that before we started wanting to get a homestead and thinking of having our own animals, we were vegans for an entire year. Yeah. And we didn't do it because of animals per se. It was about the broken food system and what these big box stores, what what those animals are big going corporations. Through. Yeah. And so we were vegan for a year and I'm thankful for it because we learned how to cook vegetable dishes better. It made us a lot more connected with food mm -hmm. and that's really when we started to grow more things so I want you guys to kind of get a backstory I understand that this is a, a really tough topic for a lot of people but I want people to be connected with where their food is from and know that the animals that we are taking care of here are having an amazing life and it makes me feel better growing food knowing the life that they're having yeah and every animal on this land will have some purpose, whether it's to provide food for us or some type of nutrition. So if you're new to this channel or been with us for a while, just understand that, that what we have on this property is gonna be providing for us sooner or later or some type of nutrition for us. These three spaghetti squash right here have been invaded by cabbage looper caterpillars. I'm gonna go ahead and open these up and give these to the turkeys for one of their last meals. I gotta throw it over. I don't know what that is sound. They have been going to town on these pears. Oh, you guys did kill it. You're going at it, huh? It's our first time processing our own animals and we've taken good care of these animals. They've had a great life. As I've mentioned before, nature is cruel. These are broad-breasted turkeys and if we don't process them they're going to get too big to even walk this is our first time processing these animals especially turkeys on our own without our mentors or anything we're going to say a little prayer kind of give a blessing to thank god for allowing us to raise these animals so one thing i've learned from watching justin rhodes one of his videos is to catch him by the feet because I think Art and Brie was over there, one, one of the videos, and it cut her eye, got it close by her eyeball and stuff. And we have had witnessed these as well. Once the turkeys was a little bit younger and trying to grab them, they would scratch up all my arm, just their wings and their, their feet if you don't grab them right. As you can see, it's very calm. How, do you, how are you feeling? I feel pretty good. About I your mean, first independent yeah, I, kill. Uh, luckily, you know, being at Jason Rupp, the Big Bear Homestead, it kind of prepared us. So, so now we just ooh, put that in there, dunk it. For how long? For like 45 seconds or till the feathers start coming off. So it's supposed to feel right up in there. Oh, it's... Huh? I was looking at that It's stack. mostly grass, you can see. That's good. Yeah. I mean, because that's all they were mostly eating. You a slit here, you just reach up all up inside of here. Turkeys is a lot easier, because when I, we were doing chickens, it was hard for me. You just basically just want to scoop everything out of here. Right here is your gizzard. So I'm gonna... Cut. That's something we're saving. Yep. So then this is what you was talking about, coming Cutting right here. Cutting that circle around the boot. Right there. Yeah. Oop. Then coming up from behind. I'm gonna come down the other side. And 
just like a little bone right here. You just want to follow it through. Careful not to catch anything. And that's the nasty stuff. Yeah. So these are the lungs. And this is basically an oil gland. Once you feel that bone, you just take that off. See all that oil just coming off of there? So you just take that off. Rinsing. All right, now we're just gonna allow this to rest. How long? We do at least for 24 hours. We'll put some more water in here. We are starting to time ourselves, trying to perfect our system. This is bird number five. Mm -hmm. We uh, are averaging between 25 to 30 minutes right now per bird. What have you changed in your routine up to this point? I'm finding different ways to do different things that seem like it's working. There's been like one or two that it was harder to get the crawl yeah. and the lungs. But now I think I figured out a way to do it. So I think it's working. Yeah. Because I mean, I already got it out. The first one was like real, real bad. Yeah, you look like you're kind of like blazing through it. I think what's taking, surprisingly, what's taking the longest is actually after cutting the neck, just waiting for that process to take place, right? Yeah. That part's taking longer than what chickens did in our experience. That's the only experience we have. Wouldn't you say that that's almost like six to 10 minutes? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's taken a while. Now you also learned that you don't like that Murray McMurray knife that came in that kit, right? It's all right. I think it's too soft for uh, turkey necks. You think that the turkey neck is just like a lot thicker? Yeah. Now that knife that you have in your hand, you just got that through Amazon, right? Yeah, I did, got it from Amazon for when we did our, um, when I was doing the brisket. And it was supposed to be like the best knife to get the fat, thick fat parts off of the brisket. What number turkey is that? Five, six, seven. No, this one's eight. Oh, is it? Okay. So we've gotten it to where he's doing the killing and right after the plucker, I'm starting to do the dressing. Is this called the dressing? Yeah. This is only my second bird, um, but I feel like I'm remembering what I'm supposed to do. Yesterday was a very long day. We didn't know what we were going to run into, what problems we were going to have, and we finished off the last turkeys in the dark. What did you find most challenging? Uh, the most challenging for me was uh, the slitting of the throats. Cause I'm grossing out in the inside. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like I thought I was doing a good job, but wind up wasn't, and I just wind up just getting rid of uh, a lot of the blood, making sure all the blood was drained out of that. The plucker was another issue. One of, uh, on your TikTok video, one of the viewers suggested how did we thought about cutting off the leg so it wouldn't uh, cause any uh, jamming issue. I think that was a, an excellent observation or tip that they gave us yeah. because I feel like the legs did kind of catch up on, on that. Yeah. And another thing was the Cajun rocket, it, keeping that temperature at a good temperature kept on that. I thought that kind of messes up towards the end. We had it at 150. We, we, ha we were rocking for yeah. a, a good uh, I would I would say 10 turkeys. Yeah, we were rocking and then the temperature either went up or down and then once it got below uh, below about 145 and, or above uh, one I want to say 155 when we put it in the plucker it was just tearing the skin up and honestly like some of my honest feedback on that is is that 
once we figured out a system with the temperature, that's when I was following you, mm -hmm. and I was re I was on top of checking it. That's really where we needed another person. Like yeah. we did all this ourselves. Yeah, I, I would not suggest doing 16 turkeys with two people. We probably could have had it done if the first day the, uh, the the Cajun rock was too big for my old turkey plucker. Ooh. It was rusted. It, yeah. it, it gave way. Like and so we had to go to another store and get a good stand for it. That was really nice sturdy stand. But now we just need to figure out the gauge of the temperature of the water. Yeah, and that's really, because I feel like I kind of took over in some of like the OCD stuff. And that was like one of the things, like for me, not being over there and doing that and like i feel like that that's where we fell off but as soon as we got a rhythm i was constantly like i was eviscerating a turkey and just as i was finishing that he was bringing me another one so i didn't even i didn't get to leave the tent yeah and we felt that we did a pretty good because uh somebody mentioned that they do a turkey or a chicken in, in about 24 minutes. And we were doing it, and our first, well, it was just myself, when you were doing your OCD thing, I went from 30 minutes to 20, about 24, 25 minutes. Yeah. And then uh, after I kind of showed her two turkeys, and then I start uh, dis dispatching the turkeys. And by, like she said, by the time I got into the tent, she was ready for another Yeah, tent. I feel like I got like, because I am OCD about stuff, like I was getting like very, I was getting fast yeah. with that. And I told her it's, it's going to take some time. She was surprised that on my first two turkeys that she was like, oh, wow. I just have to say, <laughs> like, you, you impressed me. I felt intimidated. I'm one of those, what? Nothing. I'm one of those where I had to like watch him do it and like be there. And then I needed him to watch me do it. And then I needed him to watch me do the second one and not say anything until I was doing something wrong. Yeah. Um, and I'm one of those people where I, that's how I learn. Oh, where's this dry? Okay, so it's supposed to. How long do we put it in for? To, you see all the air suck out. Okay. Oh, yeah. There we go, there we go. Oh, wow. I could have used that method in the kitchen. Don't you take that straw out? Is yeah, it gonna... I could you take the straw out and then you zip it tight real good. Oh, okay, you didn't do a complete tie. Yeah. And then we need to go measure it. Uh -huh. So these are the remaining six are gonna be for us. We're gonna split up and do as a family pack for ourselves. Uh, but we're still gonna count these as the giveaway for the uh, largest and smallest sizes. 38. Dang, that was, I bet you that was that baby, baby, small the, one. The run. Why don't we let it grow?